the exhibition that uh, has just opened at Icon in Birmingham starts off with a mock-up of your studio. Why did you feel it was important to start like this by exposing the inner workings of your practice as an artist, but also the gallery? There is, you know, quite a lot of reasons to, to, to do so because, uh, you know, um, it's my life <laughs> to do things. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm very keen on to, to show uh, the the background, the, the mycelium of thoughts, but also the the workshop of thinking with mat materia. You know, we, so that's why I'm inviting people to to see how things being developed and and how, how the materia is transmuted into the ideas. Uh, that's that's the one reason. The second reason, or one of the more other reason is to show also the thoughts behind in a very comprehensive way. That means, for instance, if I show a drawing uh, where I'm showing how plants are having a root system, and if I connect it to a root system or wiring system of a computer, I don't have to explain much with words. Uh, so even a 10 years old kid, you know, or 80 years old lady will immediately understand what, what I'm thinking about. And I don't have to write text about it, you know. So it's a tool to show thinking also. So this question of systems is really key to the whole exhibition. There's reference to the systems of the nervous system of the human body to computing systems um, and to plant systems. Do you see these as all very separate entities or as the work suggests, do you see a very strong interrelation between them? Absolutely, I feel, you know, strong similarities and, and I'm, 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 I really feel it's a one thing, you know, and that's, <clears throat> That's what I've been trying to find through making, for instance, Postnaturalia, because Postnaturalia was basically uh, a study to compare the systems of nature and the system of technology. And uh, it's a um, fascinating um, story of how things basically are, you know, copying each other without knowing it. And it's fascinating, you know. So, for instance, if you take a coil from old television CRT monitor and you, you know, break the TV with a hammer and then you have the coil in your hand, you have a blossom of a flower. Uh, but this coil was designed to, to, to function, not to be seen. And when I think about the nature, the, the, the blossoms of flowers, they are also designed uh, to work, you know. So there is, uh, you know, uh, endless uh, analogies of and proofs that it's a one, one thing for me. The exhibition is called The End of Fun and I, I'd love you to talk to me a little more about this and the idea that a lot of these technologies are presented as entertainment or as very light-hearted things but it feels that you're showing a darker aspect to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do because, you know, in my work I try, I try to balance on the edge of... Uh, of, of something very fatal and banal, you know? That's the title of one of my catalog, Fatal, Banal, because this is how we live, basically, you know? We must have a sense of humor to survive, but we also face uh, a lot of dark and un unpleasant situation also in life. But the way of humor helps us to, to, to survive. And um, 
the title for me is an example of it. You know, Jonathan uh, Watkins, he, he, he basically uh, decided to, to have this title because he saw it at one of my drawings. And I was agreeing Im immediately because there is an ambivalence in the title. You know, it's kind of provocative, like, what do you mean? How, you know, what do I mean by the end of fun, you know? But I always take it as, a, as if it is pronounced by a clown with a, with a red nose, you know? So if you hear clown saying, you know, the end of fun, you start to smile, you know, immediately because it's a clown who is saying that. So I, I'm, you know, a little bit like the clown. Because there is certainly this dichotomy between horror and humour in the exhibition. For example, the, the raven and then also the word revolution, which is looks like a small child hitting the, the head against the wall and it's very shocking. Yeah. Is shock very important to you? How do you use shock and humour in the work? You know, uh, I, I, I think that art should provoke not necessarily all of art, but you know, if you provoke a little bit, you you are um, you are creating reactions. So from time to time, I also try to provoke a little bit and 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 to to use these tools uh, which are uh, provoking. So uh, sometimes they can be. You know, why almost it's it's on the edge of violence. I know, like the revolution. You know, it's 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 it looks very violent, but it's again, it's it's our life. You know, I I was observing my kid, you know, banging his head, you know, 15 years ago to the floor, and I was you know observing this, you know, aggressivity which is uh, coherent to 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 our existence, and it's up to each of us how we you know, work with this energy. So, yeah, I don't know if it's a good answer to your question, but... Um... It seems there's also an aspect in which you're trying to change our relationship with the gallery itself. Yeah. Also, so you yeah. have these moments of shock as you go around the exhibition. So these um, works mm -hmm. are not necessarily in an exhibition context. And mm -hmm. we also mm -hmm. have these barriers that are placed outside the gallery mm -hmm. at the moment that look like deer. And then you've mm -hmm. also opened up sections of the gallery so that we can see the inner working, so we can see the, the wiring and the lift shaft and the less formal aspect to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 you are pointing it out very well. You know, it's, it's also answered to your first question. You know, that's why the laboratory is you know one of the tools how to you know change the usual use of the gallery and and uh, transfer it into something different which is this time a studio or working with the bars outside i i usually try to think about exhibitions uh in, in institutions as a scenography as a social sculpture a little bit like like to change it into a little bit unexpected situations like I did in some shows before. I was, for instance, you know, installing a, a, a shop of clothes in the entrance of Tingle Museum. So people were confused if they are really, you know, you know, entering the show or not. And, and this like, you know, this creates this nervosity. And I think, you know, to be nervous, it's also healthy. Yeah. As technology has evolved, have you needed to learn new skills so that you can start to incorporate it more into your work? Has it been a very, very much a learning process for you? Um, it's it's like that, you know. I I am I don't feel I don't think that I am really like you know uh, sophisticated engineer, you know. And I'm not, you know. I I can't. Just a second. I will go to a to a room where because I, I need to hear you well. Just a, you know, one minute. Okay. It will be better here. Just a second. 
So, uh, and, and com comparing to, to, you know, contemporary, you know, robotics and all these, you know, developed technologies, I'm really, you know, low tech, you know, DIY uh, category, but uh, I realized 20, 25 years uh, ago, that the, the best way is to do it yourself. It's the it's not the fastest way, but it's very adventurous way, and uh, it it makes me happy when I'm able to to do things by myself, and I don't need to ask too many too many people or professionals to help me. And this is how I how I do things. Yeah. Does does it help you to understand the systems that you're addressing in your work as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 very much. Because, like you know, ten years ago, before you know, making Post Naturalia and these projects, I was using technology as a tool, uh, and it 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 needed to function well. That means, for instance, Raven to synchronize his beak and, and legs or revolution, you know, all these, you know, computer controlled motors. I was just busy with connecting the wires, you know, properly and to function. And when I was starting to work with Post Naturalia, I, I had all this, you know, already behind me and I, I started to be just um, fascinated by the aesthetics of, of things. And I, all of a sudden I didn't need to connect proper cable to a proper connection. I was just, you know, you, you, working with aesthetics of the things, yeah. of the systems. Because I'm, I'm so impressed by this, you know, universal mycelium we are li living in, you know, every building, you know, every city is just uh, incredible, you know, mycelium of wires and, pipes and everything and this is really fascinating yeah. can you tell me a bit more about this idea of mycelium because i've not i've not heard technology compared to to it in this way before so mycelium is like this um like a kind of bacterial system mm -hmm. in the earth yes mm -hmm. yeah i'm talking about mycelium as a as a, as a systems of of roots you know so you know all these you know, urban existence, because we are now living in the so-called urbanosan. That means that, you know, we are more and more living in the cities. That means we are more and more, more and more wired and connected by wires. And that leads again back to, you know, basic principles like copper, you know, without copper, we, would, we wouldn't exist because copper is, you know, the, the, the most uh, used conductor etc etc so we are just living in this huge uh, grid of 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 wires and, and 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 that's what i was trying to you know to to articulate in 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 post naturalia work mainly so when we walk in and we see a work like post naturalia which seems to us like it's these very alien systems that it's all artificial we need to see it. There's a truth in which it's actually part of our system as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, it is. And you know, in a also certain uh, point of view, I was always also thinking about it as a as a kind of pseudo geological layer, which is reflecting our age of you know silicon intelligency you know so so in a, in a certain way we can look at this you know uh, horizontal sculpture which is being placed on the floor as as a, as, a, as, some, as as a as a as a proof or corpus delicti of the age of information which we are now living in so and and the, and another way of seeing it is also that I was basically creating this post nature, which is made of, you know, materials which has been 
already used in technology. So it can be also seen as as a as a as a nature version two, which is born uh, on on the background of of the era of information. So in one of your most recent drawings, um, you mentioned Greta Thunberg. Does your work have an explicitly environmental message? Do you see it in those terms? Oh, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Um, of course, it's a, you know, I, I feel it's a kind of inevitable trend in uh, contemporary art to think about sustainability and, you know, all these important ecological elements. But it's a kind of schisma for me or, you know, schizophrenia because I never, uh, I, I don't want to manifest it, you know, like this because it would be a lie because, you know, I am using materials from the junkyard a lot and so, but it's not like a statement. I never want it to be as a statement because for instance, to bring the show to Birmingham, you know, we, 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 we loaded, you know, one real camion full of stuff and two other cars. So I cannot claim that, you know, I'm the artist who is working 100% ec ecological. It, you know, the CO2 footprint is quite big, you know, to bring stuff to, to Birmingham. So I'm aware of it. But it's not a statement, and it's not a, it's not a call to be to yeah to. You know what I mean. I don't, I don't want to be pathetic in 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 in, the, in that sense. I'm I'm more I'm I'm still saying I'm doing sculptures, and to do sculptures is always a little unecological. Poetry is maybe, or music is more <laughs> ecological. Yeah. But perhaps. Um... And perhaps ecological or environmental is not a helpful way of thinking about it, but certainly there is an engagement with the idea not only of waste, but also of dirt and pollution in your work. So I'm mm -hmm. thinking also about disappearing, which is mm -hmm. work that is like kind of dirty, dirty mm -hmm. snow as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's certainly engaging, I would, would you say perhaps with an aesthetics of waste and aesthetics mm -hmm. of, dirt and pollution absolutely you know this this work is has been done by observing for years a moment when and we are having it less and less unfortunately but when we have a snow in town in in czech republic it's a it's a magic moment it's a water basically you know form of water snow white beautiful and this atmosphere of fairy tale and change of the city uh, takes a very short time, only a couple of hours. And this snow becomes a projection to our very polluted, you know, way of life because it gets dirty in a couple of hours. And this beautiful white of the snow becomes a, a projection of, of this. And, and, and it was always reminding me also the mountains of, you know, high mountains of Alps or whatever. And I was watching it, you know, year and year. And I was always like, oh, I, I, I have to make this as a, sculpt, as, a, as a sculpture. So that was a, that was a this, you know, basic, just observing things which are around me. And they are nothing. It's just a form of water. But in the same time, it's so important to have water because water is life. Yeah. And there also seems to be this very important aspect to your work, which is to do with fables and fairy tales and myths and deities. So you have the monumental sculpture, My Light is Your Life, which has a kind of reference to Shiva. You have yeah. the raven, which is like a mythic European creature, mm -hmm. and also these small animal-like figures. Can you tell me a little about how you imagine these myths and these deities mm -hmm. in a contemporary mm -hmm. context? Maybe it's because we don't 
you know, live it anymore, the rituals and and we don't, you know, talk too much with magicians and so. So I like to incorporate it in, in, into my work from time to time. So I was, you, you, you mentioned, you know, precisely Raven and Shiva, but there was also... Uh, I have also a sculpture which is called Bad News and it's a it's a devil who is playing drums and listening to news and and for instance the devil in my work comes from I think one of the last traditions we have here in Czech Republic so it's a Saint Nicholas day when uh, you know the Saint Nicholas with the devils and angel they be coming to uh, how, how homes of people and 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 kids are scared to hell when i was a kid i was so afraid of you know of of, of this day when the devil will come you know to our place or or, or I, I i will see him and it's still a little bit here but it's dying a little bit and and that's why i'm trying to you know call it up a little bit yeah christoph thank you so much i think that's probably enough uh, the show okay i hope so happened. sorry for my limited english but uh, i'm doing my best <laughs> no it was wonderful thank you so much and thank you for good questions <laughs>